Hey guys, it's another Packers victory and a, another week that we could celebrate the Packers absolutely dominating on defense and on offense. We can celebrate the fact that Malik Willis didn't lose the game. 2-0 as a starter for the Packers and yeah, Packers coming away with a big victory this past Sunday against the Tennessee Titans. 30-14 uh, to 14, under the leadership of Malik Willis and a very dominating defensive performance by the Packers. Uh, before we preview this week's game, let's look back at uh, last week's game against the Titans. Uh, the Packers on defense dominating um, the Titans offense, allowing 14 points. Not only that, but forcing three turnovers adding to the season total of seven interceptions, which uh, ties a total from last year. Last year, we only had seven interceptions all season. This year, seven interceptions within three games, I will take that. Um, but I'm not done there. The Packers also had eight sacks, which it was a sack fest. The second half of that game was a sack fest. Poor Will Levis became a part of the ground, literally, because that's where he was half the time during the game, was on the ground. And the Packers' defense made life tough for him. Again, eight sacks, that's tremendous. Uh, Packers' defense, again, just dominating. On offense, uh, Malik Willis was able to lead the Packers' offense once again. Um, and this time, you know, he didn't want to say that it was a redemption game for him, but it, to me, it kind of felt like a redemption game. Um, he passed for over 200 yards and complete 13 passes, uh, had a touchdown of his own. Um, but again, Malik Willis is leading an offense without Jordan Love, and they're still able to put up points. That's very impressive. Um, and then he also led the Packers in rushing, 73 yards rushing. Again, a rushing TD. Great game for Malik Willis. Overall, great game by the Packers. Um, and a very confident win for the Packers. You know, they came into uh, week two expecting to lose maybe one or two games. For Malik Willis to lead the Packers in both games and win, it means a lot, you know. Now you're sitting at two and one, and now coming up here on Sunday, you have the Vikings coming into town, which is probably going to be for the first place in NFC North. Um, the Vikings are three and zero. Oh, the Packers are two and one. Whoever loses this game probably gets knocked down to second place, and whoever wins this game gets at least a tiebreaker in the early part of the season. Now, is that important at this point? Not really. Um, you're only four games into the season, but again, a pivotal game for the Packers. You got the Vikings coming in. Very dangerous offense. Um, defensive wise, they're still working at it a little bit, but again, 3-0. And this is a team that has beaten two playoff teams, the San Francisco 49ers and the um, Houston Texans. I know, I, it took me a minute to, to, to know who they beat, but hey, Houston Texans, 49ers, you know, it's it's a big deal when you beat two playoff teams in the first three games. Uh, and then you beat the New York Giants, which, I mean, I don't know what to say about the New York Giants other than the fact that they beat us last year. It's the New York Giants, you know, uh, didn't make the playoffs last year, and well, it's just the New York Giants. Did I just already mention that? Probably already did. Some keys to the game, I think, um, are for the Packers offense, if they have Jordan Love there, um, to not only rely on the running game a little bit, but incorporate a little bit of the short passing game. We're not expecting Jordan Love to do too much. First game back from the injury, we don't want to rush him back. Um, you know, he, I know he didn't play the last two weeks, but literally this is less than a month since he's suffered that uh, MCL sprain, you know, don't put too much on your quarterback. And what I mean by that is just rely on your run game. You got Josh Jacobs, um, who didn't have a great game against Tennessee, but, you know, he's looking for that rebound game, which this is the perfect time to have that rebound game. Um, and then you also have Emmanuel Wilson. He had a great game against the Titans. He's 
slowly improving. And to see him do that throughout the season, I'm looking forward to his progression in the season. But, you know, he can handle the load too. Um, so you can depend on those two running backs there to carry the Packers offense. But at the same time too, you can use a short passing game and kind of use that to set up the running game. So again, I think the Packers should just focus on the short passing game, short slants um, and short passes, um, and then depend on that running game. Now, if it comes to a point where the Packers need to use that deep passing game, then use it. But for now, I think the short to medium passing game should work for the Packers. On defense, I do think the Packers need to continue to do what they do, which is forcing turnovers and forcing sacks. The Packers defense this year has been amazing, bar none. Um, it's been an experience for me to see the difference between this Packers defense and last year's Packers defense. This is the more exciting defense. You're getting turnovers daily. You know, you got Xavier McKinney back there waiting for just another pick. You know, he's got three interceptions in three games. And, you know, the Packers defense right now is very exciting to watch. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do against the Vikings offense that is very explosive. You got Justin Jefferson on the other end there, and he's one of the most explosive wide receivers you got in the game. So it'll be important for the Packers to lock him down. Obviously, Jari Alexander has experience doing that. He locked him down two years ago. Um, but, you know, just to see the Packers defense, I want to see them keep doing the same thing, which is attack the ball and attack the quarterback and that will force turnovers so you know if you can keep the Vikings offense kind of grounded in a way and, and stop the run game there then you're basically good. Now if you're looking for my prediction my prediction is that the Packers will win uh, it will be a very tight game though and I'm not a fortune teller, but I feel like the Packers will win uh, by a less second field goal. The game will be tied 21-21. Braden Arvison, I think, will kick the game-winning field goal with three seconds left. And the Packers will win 24-21. Once again, guys, I appreciate you guys watching this video. Um, appreciate the views I'm getting here. I know I'm getting new to this and I'm getting used to it a little bit. As you notice, my setup in the back here is a little different. Uh, been going through some big life changes with uh, moving uh, houses and things like that. I promise once I get a house and everything that this setup will be a little bit better. Uh, but for now, again, I appreciate you guys watching. You can follow me on X at Hauka, or you can follow me and the Packers Talk crew at PackersTalk.com. Until next time, guys, see you later. And again, as always, go Pack Go.